not simply a symbol. This week on the show, acclaimed actress and activist Anjanou Ellis, best known for her roles in The Help and Quantico, on her true life mission to get the emblem of the Klan out of her home state flag, and why she won't shoot another film in Mississippi till it's done. Then an excerpt from a documentary for the Moral Courage Project with Mississippi hip hop artist and activist Genesis B confronting racism classmate by classmate. It's all coming up on The Laura Flanders Show, the place where the people who say it can't be done take a back seat to the people who are doing it. Welcome. recognize my next guest from her many roles on the big and small screens. Among other things, she appeared in the 2011 film The Help, as well as in the acclaimed miniseries The Book of Negroes. In ABC's Quantico, she played former FBI assistant director Miranda Shaw. Next up, you can see her in the highly anticipated If Beale Street Could Talk, directed by Barry Jenkins. What you may not know about her is that she is also an outspoken activist and a key figure in the growing movement to remove Confederate and racist symbols around this country. In particular, she's been fighting to get the Confederate symbol out of the Mississippi state flag. I'm happy to welcome Anjanou Ellis to the studio to talk about this and more. Anjanou, great to have you. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I had such fun the other day. I got to go to an event and there you were talking about the Mississippi state flag and I said Confederate History Month be, well, I won't say the word, coming up. Mm -hmm. um, let's get you in here to talk about it. Yeah, thank you. Remind people what's the problem with the Mississippi state flag. It's been around not since the Civil War, but what, 1894, something yeah. like that? Yes, a, a very long time, <laughs> say the least. Um, and the problem with the Mississippi state flag is that part of it is the Confederate uh, saltire. So the okay. saltire is what is in the left-hand corner uh -huh. of the flag. So that's called the saltire. What flies in the wind is called the fly. Okay. What is in that corner is a saltire. So that is the, that is the prominent feature of the Mississippi state flag. Now, the problem with that is that saltire is also the flag of the Ku Klux Klan. Um, it's also the flag of the Confederacy. Now, um, there are those who have no problem with the Confederacy. It's a point of pride mm -hmm. for them. But our issue is very, very specific in that one of the reasons that Mississippi was a part of the Confederacy in the first place, and one of the reasons that it uh, held Confederate ideals and principles is stated in its Mississippi Statement of Secession. Mm -hmm. Now, the Statement of Secession are, is the reason why the state of Mississippi decided to fight the Civil War. And they said? And they said, very explicitly, our position is thoroughly identified with slavery. And a blow against the uh, plantation economy of slavery is a blow against uh, not, just a, not just our economy, but civilization itself. They were kind enough to say this stuff back then, <laughs> right out front. White supremacy yes, rules. Yes, yes, yes. They're, they were not vague yeah. at all. Pre-PC. So yeah. this is personal for you. It is very. It is very, very personal for me. Um, and I think, um, I think what's missing in this sort of national argument about um, the flag is that, that part of it. Yeah. Right. And I think who is sort of owning this discussion are the people who claim Southern pride and uh, Southern heritage, but they don't, they don't hold it um, by themselves. Um, African Americans, black Mississippians um, are part of that, are part of that heritage. And what it is, what it means to them is not what it means, is not what it means to us. Here's a picture of you at the, at the Image Award. That's a red blood red hand there on mm -hmm. your desk this yes. is this is not some inert symbol in your view 
No, it's not. Um, that flag is a directive to take life. Um, Dylan Roof, when we were researching his life after he went into Mother Emanuel in, in Charleston, South Carolina, and killed um, um, the, the worshipers and people who were praying in the act of prayer inside that church, we saw that he was waving the Confederate flag. That's right. And that flag gave him authority to do that. There was a man named Scott Michael Green in Iowa, and he killed a police officer. And weeks before that, he was waving a Confederate flag in, um, at a football game. So those are recent examples. But Mississippi has a history, a well-documented history, where that flag is flying at the site of lynchings, at the site of bombings, at the site of house burnings. That flag is an authority for terrorism, terrorism against American citizens. Our Attorney General Jeff Sessions mm -hmm. is one of those who has gone out of his way to defend the flying of this flag. Talk a bit about what it's like for you and other Mississippians to be surrounded by that flag. Whenever you go to a, a pretty much a public, any public building, at least it mm -hmm. used to be the case. How does it feel? I was talking to a young woman the other night um, after that panel that right. you attended, and she called it a silent assault. Mm. She called it psychological warfare. And that's exactly what it is. We don't have um, Jim Crow laws in the state of Mississippi anymore, but we don't really need to have those laws anymore because that the flag acts as a proxy for those laws. If you are a black Mississippian or a white Mississippian for that matter, your reaction to that flag, your response to that flag will be, okay, if that flag is hanging somewhere, I know not to go there. Um, if a flag is hanging somewhere in a, in a business, I know not to spend my money there because I know I am not welcome. That flag for black Mississippians is a do not trespassing sign as, this, as it has been described. Now imagine being a citizen of a place where you are paying your taxes to a, to a government, and that government is using that, your tax money, to fly a flag to tell you that you are not welcome. And by extension, mentioning Jeff Sessions' role, that's all of us. That's not just Mississippi. Yes, 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 yes. And, and, and here's the thing. Um, we, we have been fighting this fight in Mississippi for a very, very long time. And, you know, we, this whole idea of like monuments and flags, it really is about who, who controls the narrative of the American experience, right? So, um, who's controlling the Mississippi narrative are folks who present themselves as people who are proud of the flag. But we're in, we're up here saying, no, 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 we don't want this. This is not represent us. This is, this represents terror. This is, this is mm. not represent, represent, representative of terrorism. This is terrorism, terrorism against us. So we have been saying that, been saying that for generations. It, well, the fight against this flag well preceded me, right? What's missing in this what's missing in the fight against this flag, against this um, symbol and this directive of terrorism against American citizens, are the voices outside of Mississippi. Is that because people, particularly up north, think, well, we don't want to be northern interventionists. It doesn't help the cause to have people from the north come in and side with critics of the southern heritage, so-called? Right. Well, we, you know, you have people like Mike Huckabee when he was running for office a few years ago. He was saying that, well, if someone tried to come in and tell us what to do with our flag in our Arkansas, we would tell them what to do with it, you know? But the fact of the matter is we are all citizens of this country, and we all, we, we all bear the responsibility of citizenship. And so what affects us in Mississippi affects all of us. And if you have a, if you are disaffected because the president of the United States is the president of the United States, what you have to realize is this idea of Southern pride, that which is birthed in Southern strategy, all of that's coiled together, right? Mississippi is the Petri dish of that. There would be no Donald Trump if there were not Mississippi and the culture and the socioeconomic reality that is Mississippi that is rooted in that flag. 
There would probably be no American capitalism either, at least not in the way that it is, plantation politics exactly. being such a decisive, distinct part of our economic history. Yes. Um, there's an economics to this current story too. Uh, yeah. And there are some economic strategies that people have used where we boycott the state. I don't think you'll shoot a film there, right? Yeah, I mean, which is which can be very, very hard because here's the problem. When you are from a place, a place is not just a place. A place is where you are from and you have roots there and your family is there. And part of me loves it. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a part of me that loves it, and the part that loves it is connected to what my family has been and who they are and who they are to me. And because my, you know, my the our blood is in that soil. Mm -hmm. But the good part, we're not screaming blood and soil. We are, we are proud of it. We are proud of that. I'm proud of that. But uh, there's a generosity to what we are, what we want to achieve. My granddaddy, my grandfather, was arrested in the middle of the night because his church was bombed um, and they arrested him for bombing his own church. So this legacy for us is, is, is very, very rich. I wanna say this, if the SEC, and I, what, the Southeastern Conference of the, um, the Southeastern, Southeastern or Athletic Con Conference, if tomorrow, if the SEC and the NCAA decided that they would not broadcast another game in Mississippi, the flag would come down within weeks. So what happened? What happened after, you mentioned Charleston, Charlottesville. Hasn't there been a nationwide campaign to take these symbols and the modern symbols down? What has not happened yet in Mississippi? And, and is this the year, as Boots Riley says, that we've been waiting for, that this change could occur? That's what I'm fighting for. <laughs> That's what I'm fighting for. I'm fighting against what I'm fighting against this notion that folks who are outside of Mississippi have that they can't intrude because it's Mississippi. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting against that notion. I'm fighting against that notion of like, well, we can't be northern aggressors. We can't be eastern. We can't be eastern elites. We can't be western elites. That's 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 ridiculous. We the rest of this country should look at what the what what is happening in Mississippi and what has happened in Mississippi for generations in the same way it looks at the Christ the water crisis that happened in Flint, Michigan. So no one said, well, oh, kids, their, their water is being you know, poisoned by lead. I can't get involved. Mm -hmm. No one had that reaction. Um, and, but folks think that it's just a flag, so I, you know, they'll, they'll deal with it. It's just Mississippi. You know, but then what does that say about the courage yeah. of your own convictions? So your convictions, you're an actress. You've played some real people. You, you've got a great extraordinary film coming up, um, If Beale Street Could Talk. You want to talk about that? Yes, I played a character named Amanata Diallo, and it was a miniseries that aired on, um, aired on BET. And I was particularly proud of it because it showed a uh, part of American history that folks don't, folks don't know about. It, it showed the part where it showed, it presented, um, portrayed uh, African Americans who were enslaved, and they sided with the British because the British were promising them freedom. Oh yeah, you know if who they, was. Yeah, if they, you know, it's my great fought great, for great them. grandfather. Oh. If we're gonna go there, but anyway, please do. Your yeah, story, yeah, yeah. Keep going. Yes, yes. So Keep they going. they promised them freedom if the if they if the uh, if they fought along with them. And they promised them freedom, they promised them land if they went to Canada and so on and so forth. So they did that, got to Canada, there was no land, there was all these broken promises. So anyway, Amanata is a is a uh, fictional character that's based on um, those people okay, gotcha. who did that, who did that migration. All right, so talk Canada. about talk about if Beale Street could talk. Well, Bill, If Bill Street Could Talk is uh, directed by Barry Jenkins. Barry Jenkins won the Oscar last year for, for Moonlight. And um, it's an adaptation of James Baldwin's wonderful book, If Bill Street Could Talk. It stars Regina King, Coleman Domingo, uh, and all these really, really, uh, Michael Beach, and all these really, really extraordinary actors. And somehow I got in it, <laughs> and <laughs> somehow I, be, I, I was, 
uh, cast in it as well as, as one of the supporting actors. And uh, I think Barry Jenkins is one of the most exciting directors to come around in a very, very long time. I think he has a visual sense that um, is, is a, a wonderful thing to behold on camera and a wonderful thing to experience as an actor. So I haven't seen it, but um, I have great faith that it'll be good. And Bullwood's <laughs> story is about a black man accused of rape, I think. Yes. Is that right? Yes. Yes, yes. And it's about this 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 mother's zeal to to um, protect him in the face of that. Yeah. So do you think something's shifting? We talk a lot on today uh, on this show about we, we say it's the place where the people who say it can't be done take a backseat to the people who are doing it. When you look at the struggle around the Mississippi flag, that's mm -hmm. a long, long struggle. Sure. Um, we have to address that history and that legacy a lot as it acts on us today before I think we can create the new. And that's clearly what you and the campaign you're part of is doing. At the level of our culture nationally and the culture that you're involved in, TV, movies, and all the rest, if you were to take stock, what, what would you say is happening? Are, are, we, are we making a shift? Is something significant happening? Or is Hollywood just waking up to a black audience out there? I think these things are cyclical. Yeah. I mean, James Baldwin was on television regularly. He was a regular pundit. Yeah. So it's not like we haven't been here before in some respect. I don't know whether the labor unions and their bosses really hate me. That doesn't matter, but I know I'm not in their unions. I don't know if the real estate lobby is anything Ooh, against black over. people, but I know the real estate lobbies keep me in the ghetto. I think it's cyclical. And um, I think Zadie Smith said that uh, in response to uh, Donald Trump's election. You know, she said that it's that history is cyclical, and I, th I think that when we're on the cycle, we're up on the Ferris hill, down on the Ferris, hill, and depending on we are where we are, we sort of like forget and we relax, and then we think that oh, the the fight, the fight is the fight is won, and we don't have to do anything. But there are always, all, always, also, all there are always these forces that are hungrier than you are. Mm -hmm. And you always have to be at the ready, always have to be innovative to to counter to counter their assault. Um, just as much as we are building a resistance to that, they are building a resistance to our resistance, um, and we can't let our we can't let our guard down. But I'm also I'm excited. I'm excited, Clearly. and I'm I'm excited. And the reason why the reason why I'm excited is the panel that you came to at NYU was a result of. They're seeing the passion of myself and Genesis B, this wonderful hip hop artist who's from Mississippi, and these brave voices, and they're responding to that. And so that gave us a sort of national platform to talk about this, where we wouldn't have normally had that. Roland Martin, who was on that panel, he's allowed us to come on his show and, and talk about what's going on in Mississippi. And you've launched a campaign that people can be part of, right? Yes, yes. How like can we, they make a pitch? How can they be part of it? Well. One, th one thing is, there are a couple of things you can do, a few things that you can do. One is, is that you can contact the governor of the state of Mississippi and tell him, listen, I am an American citizen and this is unconscionable. It's unconscionable. It was unconscionable, it's unconscionable in 2018, it was unconscionable in 1901. It's unconscionable, take the flag down. Call, call your local, call your state representative, call your uh, national congressmen, senators, your, your uh, your how people in the house and tell them your your representatives in the house and tell them you want that flag removed. Now what you could say is now see that flag flies all over Washington D.C. It flies at Union Station. It flies in the halls of Congress. You could say you could call the mayor of, of, of D.C. and say I don't I don't want to give you business until you bring that until you take that flag down. So you can take responsibility from your wherever you wherever you are. It's all of us taking our responsibility wherever wherever we can. Um, so there's a, there's one thing and you can also follow us. We're at Take It Down America. That's what it Take It Down America at Take It Down America on Instagram and we are at www.takeitdownamerica.com. Uh, all right, people, take it down, America.com. You heard it from Angie New Alice. Thanks so much for joining me. It's been great talking with uh, you. Thank you so much. A pleasure. Thank you.
Genesis B is a hip-hop artist, activist, and Mississippian who's also been at the forefront of the movement to take down the state flag. In this film, for the Moral Courage Project, we follow her from New York back to her home state as she engages a childhood friend who has very different opinions on the flag and what it means. Take a look. The crowd had no idea what I was going to do. The promoters of the club had no idea what I was going to do. Mississippi just named April's Confederate Heritage Month. They, they have the audacity to name April Confederate Heritage Month. I'm going to show you how I celebrate that. Speaking out on this issue wasn't an easy decision because I, I know the type of backlash that I would receive. I held the flag in one hand and I held a lighter in the next. The crowd started getting really excited, asking for me to burn it, but I chose not to, and instead I threw it out into the crowd. Y'all rip this shit apart for me, rip that shit apart. Someone took a picture of me holding up the noose, draped in the flag, and the picture went viral. The response I got from that was harassment online, and there was a few calls to my phone. It was kind of scary at first, and although I do not fear the white supremacists who made threats against me, I do take the threats extremely seriously. But instead of hiding behind sheets, they're hiding behind fake avatars and profile pictures. I'm gonna get trolls anyway, so it might as well be behind something that I, I believe in and standing up for something that I believe in and standing up for people who don't have the voice and platform that I do. I grew up in Biloxi, Mississippi. When I come back home from New York, I just love it. My family's down here. <laughs> but the Mississippi state flag still has the Confederate battle flag in the Canton flying high people see our flag, they associate Mississippi with the Confederate flag. But sometimes you gotta get out of your comfort zone in order for a change to happen. That's just always how, how it's been. The Confederate battle flag, and I had family members who, who fought for the Confederacy. Uh, it is, it was designed as a flag to differentiate troops on the battlefield. So when you uh, see the state flag, Mississippi state flag, how does it make you feel? Uh, it's definitely a symbol of, you know, home. Uh, what about you? Um, makes me feel unwelcome. With my grandfather and my family being harassed by KKK and white supremacists, flying and waving that flag, uh, there's a negative connotation when I think of that, and it's not something that I say represents me as a descendant of um, African Americans. You have a flag, the Confederate, you know, the Confederate battle flag that has been misrepresented by neo-Nazis and just people of hate. They took something that, a symbol that was used to differentiate battle, uh, troops on the battlefield and turned it in to a symbol of hate, and I see where people uh, are offended by it, but I believe that we should just leave it be because it is history. Um, it does show where we come from. We just need to educate the people as to what that flag is, what it really stands for, mm -hmm. um, and that although it is used as a symbol of hate, that's not the true meaning of the flag. But what about my history, or my ancestors' history under, you know, under that ideology, you know, we'd be even less, less than. To disrespect your ancestors is not my intent no, and, at all. And, and Just I like that. I know you don't want to disrespect know mine, but at the same time, I don't apologize for my protest because I, no, I do understand that, yeah, I do understand that many Confederate uh, descendants do harbor that uh, ideology of white supremacy and don't acknowledge the faults that came with the history. You know, Confederate veterans were the ones who birthed the KKK. For me, when I did the protests, I was, I was angry. I was so angry. What was your reaction when I did my protest? 
at first I was kind of upset. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then... Then I start to think about it from your point of view and, and everybody else's point of view, and I start to see, yes, this is ha, has been used as a symbol of hate. I can see why it offends her, why she wants it down, why she doesn't want it to represent her home state. Uh, we always talk about, you know, if something bothers you, do something about it. Not a lot of people do, and here you are. So um, uh, I went from... Uh, upset to understanding to respect.